Game Demo. Hey everybody, we have got Chad Armstrong from Bungie right here, who's here to tell us a bit about the new Forge enhancements in Halo Reach. Chad, thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. So, uh, Forge was one of the big new features in Halo 3, but you guys sort of found that players went above and beyond what you were really expecting them to do with that, and you sort of like, you know, really changed it to, to, to improve what players are able to create, right? Definitely. So in Halo 3 we had Forge, and it had kind of a simple beginning and people took it way farther than we had actually anticipated that it would ever be taken. And so when we started working on Forge and Halo Reach, mm -hmm. we actually wanted to make sure that they could do all the things that they were trying to do in Halo 3 without as much, uh, without as much pain, without it taking as long, without as much clever trickery that they had to come up with on their own. Well, let's take a look at this Forge world map right here to see how that sort of all uh, manifests itself. So in, in the previous, in Halo 3 Forge, we actually built two different maps as DLC available to users. Uh, for the sake of constructing their own maps, we gave them pieces that they could use to put together to build uh, maps from open spaces, basically. And so with Reach, we built Forge World, which is the same concept, but on a much larger scale. It's, for one, a much, much larger space, and for another, it actually, we put more objects on this map than were ever in either of the two Halo 3 maps combined. So, uh, and the objects go everywhere from simple blocks, like this guy right here, to actually fairly complex structures, such as entire buildings, that people are able to build and place however they see fit, ultimately. Uh, we also uh, did a lot of consider took a lot of consideration in the kinds of things that people were doing and figured out uh, ways to make it easier for them. For example, in Halo 3, people tried to put objects into the environment, say they didn't want to use the entire piece, they wanted it to be like a half of a wall or something. Uh, it was very difficult to do in Halo 3, but in Reach we modified the physics model so that it's, uh, it's as easy as actually just placing the, rock, the object in the, uh, in the space where you want it to be. And so you can take any of these space and uh, any of these objects, place them however you like. And then it's a matter of placing your spawn points and uh, placing you know, objectives and things like that. So you can take an object and actually have it clip through another one, and that's not a bug. That's actually like purposeful. You fuse the two together? Yes, exactly. So you're able to take multiple objects and connect them as you see fit. And if, if you're, for example, I'm trying to set these two guys up next to each other, but I'm having a little trouble getting it perfect, so mm -hmm. we added a series of special tools that are used to uh, make it easier to place objects or orient objects, so I can actually get in here, and then I can go in really close and move him right into place where I want him to be. Oops, a little too fast there. And there we go. So now if I switch over to Spartan mode here, step inside, I can run up this ramp, and I turn to the right, and there's the other tower right there. All right, so uh, that's you know one of the the user interface improvements as far as what you're able to create. But Forge World as a map is impressive, not not for what we're seeing right here, but for what we're about to see out this window, right? So Forge map of uh, the the design philosophy behind Forge World is that we wanted to give people some unique spaces in which they could build their own maps. So we took this massive space, easily the biggest space we've ever created in a Halo game. I know we said that once about Boneyard, but it's not actually true anymore. Uh, and we built it to be these unique spaces that people are able to use um, pretty much however they see fit. If they wanted to build a single map out of this massive island, for example, they can do that. Or they can break the map up using walls and uh, special objective volumes and such that are available in Forge. So that, for example, they only use half the map or a quarter of the map. Um, some of these spaces, it's worth mentioning, are designed based on previous Halo missions. Mm -hmm. For example, this canyon here we debuted recently is actually uh, the geometry from Halo 2's coagulation. Okay. And then you have objects that resemble the bases from Halo 1's Blood Gulch. So you're actually able to 
combined the two, and that's actually how we made the map Hemorrhage, which is uh, basically the the third in the line of the Blood Gulch series. <laughs> So it's, you know, thus far it's obvious or to, to see that you can really create some pretty impressive maps, but fortunately you've got some examples. Yes, absolutely. So, so this is Hemorrhage, and this is a perfect example of a completed forge map. It's using the space that we call Canyon, happily named because it is, in fact, the Canyon from Coagulation. And you can see all these pieces on here that weren't on it when you were looking at Forge World proper. Mm -hmm. Uh, all of these things were placed by four, so I can run up yeah. to, say, the blue base, and I can take it apart. It looks like that piece needs to be phased. There we go. Take it apart. Just, you know, pull it out, make changes as I see fit. Even these rocks here are forged pieces that I'm able to grab and manipulate as I see fit. You can tell that this rock was actually much larger than what you saw <laughs> yeah. there. You can stick it in, you know, bam, and there it is. Just looks as uh, natural as ever. And uh, you see we've got unique objects for a forge that you don't see when you're playing, say, Team Slayer, uh, that represent, for example, these Spartans here. These guys are spawn points. So at the start of a game, a green team Spartan will spawn here. Or if it's a free-for-all game, Spartan will spawn at the white spawn point. Uh, there are other things, like these arrows could represent hills, and you see when I selected it, the boundary of the object appeared. So when you're playing King of a Hill, these are the objects you place. And uh, essentially, we've changed the system so that people are able to use objects in ways uh, that we actually weren't able to use them in uh, Halo 3 Forge. Um, effectively, anything can be an objective object. Uh, anything can have a team assignment, so you can tell that this is the red base because we say it belongs to the red team, so right. it turns red, now there's <laughs> lights. Uh, all these handy little features that we put in, even the mongoose right here, are team assigned so that they're red. I'm trying to go in here and tell it to be blue team, it changes blue. Right, let's uh, just to really give everybody a good idea of uh, how you can flex your creative muscles, let's take a look at one of the maps that are just completely original not based on anything that Bungie has previously done. Game over. So this is a map that we built entirely in Forge, and I actually mean that when I say we built it in Forge. We were sitting with a build of the game, Forge open, and the entire map was created within our in-game editor as opposed to using the external tools we normally use for building levels. This map is called The Cage. It is a completely asymmetrical map designed for Slayer mainly, but it's also good for objective game types. You can see it uses a entirely different uh, series of forge pieces. You can tell it uses a lot of different kinds. It has some decorative elements that are actually just there for decoration. <laughs> um, and uh, this was actually just an experiment in what can a person do without using any of the uh, multiple terrain spaces and if they just wanted to build something floating up in the sky. And the result is a really fun Slayer map that people will be able to play in matchmaking or locally because it'll be on the disc when they pick up Reach. And there's going to be a number of these uh, Forge maps on the disc when it comes out, right? Correct. There will be six different variants of Forge World on the disc. All right. And uh, when is the game going to be out in stores? The game comes out September 14th, uh, September 15th for Japan. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. It's been fun.